Okay, so I'm just trying to install the latest version of Ubuntu 24.04 on the Raspberry Pi 5. And uh, I've been trying and trying on an NVMe drive and really had no success. Uh, it basically eventually uh, gets to the stage where it looks like it's going to log in. Then it comes up with an error. Then it reboots, but won't let me log in with the credentials that I created. But I'm just trying it on an SD card now. And that seems to be working fine. And I have found some forum posts that kind of echo this. But one of the suggestions was to use Belena Etcher to write the image. So you can see I've downloaded 24.04 for the Pi here. And I'm writing that with a USB adapter to my NVMe drive. And hopefully that will work. But the SD card has definitely gone further. Uh, before we get to this stage, it's always come up with an error on an NVMe drive. So I might try that first. Okay, so this is my 8 gig Pi 5, and this is the SD card installation, which looks like it's gone fine. It's not come up with any issues at all, and I'm just going to try and log in for the first time. And it has worked. Uh, you might have noticed there was a graphical glitch at the start of the video, which was the kind of loading screens where it tells you all about Ubuntu were all kind of garbled and things, but uh, everything looks okay now. So welcome to Ubuntu 24.04 LTS. And we've got all our release notes and everything here. So let's close that down. Uh, let's go through this initial setup. So next, I'm happy to share data, more applications. If you used to do this before, open the App Center, it used to not populate itself on previous, yeah. So that's populating itself fine. And if I do a search, say I do a search for Dolphin, so the file manager comes up, but the emulator doesn't, but that's definitely working. So let's close that down and hit finish. We've got a new logo for the App Store. But what I think I'm going to do is uh, I want to get this working on NVMe, so I'm going to shut this down and try and boot that NVMe that I wrote with Belena Etcher. So let's shut this down and pop the NVMe drive in. Take out the SD card so it doesn't boot from that, and let's start that up. So I've got a blue light, it is booting up for the first time. Now before, this took ages. Oh, that was definitely quicker. Okay, so let me get to this stage before, so let's just go through these steps. Pop my password and everything in. We're still getting this graphical glitch here. And even moving it around, that doesn't doesn't make any difference. I don't know if you can, that you can't go full screen on this bit. I've done loads of videos on the previous version, which I've run from NVMe and SD card, and uh, it's been really useful because Raspberry Pi OS is now on Wayland, which is designed for more performance. But it definitely, with some emulators, games, and things like that, you find there are some more incompatibilities. So it's nice to have Ubuntu as a an alternative for various different things. I haven't been able to get Steam working with Raspberry Pi OS, but I have with Ubuntu. And the same with some emulators. Okay, well it's definitely doing more than it did before. So it looks like the Belena Etcher tip is going to work. Just applying some of the last changes. Okay, it looks like it's just rebooting. So this was the bit that it would get to before. Uh, although, to be fair, it didn't do all the other setup bits. It looks like it didn't save any of the sort of password and creation, but then I couldn't log in with any credentials, even Ubuntu and Ubuntu and Ubuntu and root and all the usual ones that you try. So let's see if we can log in. Yeah, excellent. So use Belena Etcher. And we can probably install Belena Etcher uh, in this. I think PyApps has it. So if we get a PyApps. So PyApps, the GitHub. And you can do this in Raspberry Pi OS as well. So install PyApps. So open a terminal with Control Alt T. And let's paste that in. And let's close that down. I'm just going to reboot just to check everything's working. So if I launch PyApps, so press the Windows key and start typing apps, I can open that up and do a search for Belena. Here we go, so that can be installed. Oh, we did get failed to install Belena Etcher, so maybe you can't do it in this. Sometimes you find with these newer versions, they're not as compatible with all the programs because they've only just come out. I'm just gonna see what it does when it's all finished. I'm not sure if it's stopped or it's got stuck. I'm going to hit Control C just to cancel that. It looks like we don't get Belena Etcher that way, or at least in this version of Ubuntu. 
yeah, you can see it's not there. Actually, this might work with known disks. Let's try that. So if I press the Windows key and type in disk, that comes as part of Ubuntu anyway. Uh, it's also my version of KDE Plasma. I used it before to fix mTerra Android. So if we click on the three dots and restore a disk image, image to restore and the destination. Yeah, so I need to plug in another drive to be able to do that. So let's first of all download Ubuntu and we'll see if that works. So in the browser, if I just go to Ubuntu, download Ubuntu desktop and we need the Raspberry Pi version, install Ubuntu desktop and a Raspberry Pi. And you see it recommends Raspberry Pi Imager, but that wasn't working for me with NVMe. So this is the version we need to download. You can see that's downloading. So let's grab another drive to write it to. So I'm going to use this one, yeah, number two. Pop it into my little Oracle USB reader. And then into the Pi. Okay, so that's downloaded. Let's close the browser and we'll open up known disks. And this is the 128 gig disk I want to write to. So we're going to press the three dots and restore a disk image. Image to restore, hopefully in the downloads. Here it is. Open that up. And just to double check my destination, I've, I'm using a 240 gig NVMe drive for my operating system. So I know this is the removable drive. So let's start restoring and see if this works. Okay, so that's all finished. You can see it's created two partitions and a load of free space, but I'm going to see what happens when you just try and boot up the operating system and see if it managed to sort out the partitions itself. So let's shut this down. And this is the SSD we've just written, or NVMe drive we've just written. Let's take this one out, pop this new one in, and reboot. It's a good start. So far, so good. Ah, and this is the error I got before with Imager. The installer encountered an unrecoverable error. A desktop session will now be run. And it does this. And it takes you to this screen where you can't log in. So whatever you do, it doesn't seem to let you log in. So I use the criteria that I created, but also anything else. And it just says username's not valid. Okay, so must use Belena Etcher. Let's shut this down and go back to the one that works. So this is the PSP emulator I've installed with PyApps and uh, it's running at two times resolution using Vulkan. I haven't had to configure or do anything. And as you can see, it's looking pretty decent. Nice and smooth. And if you press the Windows key, I quite like the way it does this with GNOME. Uh, so it brings it into a smaller window and if you were to open, say, the files uh, and then press the Windows key again. It, I like the way that it gives you the option of being able to drag on to another desktop. It's really quite logical to use uh, and all the Windows snapping is already built in as standard, which I tend to use quite a lot now. I miss it on my Mac. In fact, I should install a third party program to do it. But yeah, it works really well with Linux. And then back into the game. And if I escape out of that, you can see under settings, we've got Vulkan and it's using V3D717 at two times resolution. No frame skipping on or anything. So with the App Store, I saw on here on games, they recommended uh, Red Alert. Although I don't know if that was, if it's designed for. Uh, x86 devices. Let's just see if it works. There's a serious amount of missions here. Let's just jump into one of them. Reinforcements have arrived. Oh, it looks nice at 1080. I used to play it at such a low resolution on PC years ago. It looks like I've got loads of troops here. Let's leave these guys behind for now. And send the tanks and the troops in, or some of them. Oh, why does it go around that? Oh, because it's, look, there is a, a bridge is out, so I can't get around there. So that probably means I might as well send these guys right away, also down here as well. 
in this tank. Let's pop that over here. Oh, where was that coming from? Where's my tank? Oh, <laughs> it's still going. New construction. Yeah, option. that actually is fine. So how do I get the construction? I haven't played this for so long. Oh, here we go. Power plant. Building. My tank's still going, look. Oh, I see. Look, we need to take out these guys. And where's that happening? Yeah, that that actually feels absolutely fine. And it's quite a big map. Yeah, happy with that. I'll come back to that. And again, Windows key, and then I can close that down. Obviously, if we just keep opening things up, we can see how well it copes with all of that. But generally, Ubuntu has been really good for quite some time and, uh, you know, pretty responsive. And they really do have good support on Raspberry Pi 5, which is great to see. I love all the settings as well on Ubuntu. It's so straightforward. Everything is really logical. I think if you're coming from Windows or Mac OS, uh, you really won't have an issue with the way everything is sort of set out and works. And every different version, it just gets a bit more polished, really. If we go to all of the apps down the bottom here, you can see that we've got this quick launch various utilities, the office apps are installed as standard. So LibreOffice, obviously Pi apps I've put in, camera apps are there, transmission, so for downloading torrents. Anyway, I'll play around with it more. I'm sure it will pop up in other videos because I tend to use Ubuntu for, for certain things that I can't get working with Raspberry Pi OS or with Wayland, and uh, Ubuntu has been really good for that. So I've restarted in Raspberry Pi OS uh, because I wanted to check if Belena Etcher does still work and I've installed it with Pi Apps and it does work. So if I start typing Belena, you can see that it launches and we can do flash from file. So obviously download that Ubuntu file that I showed earlier on in the video and that will take you to your downloads folder and you can locate the file. And then you can change your storage on here as well. So you can pick your NVMe drive and then you can flash the image. So you don't need this for SD card if you want to try it out on SD card, but you will definitely know it's a big performance increase if you're using an NVMe drive. So if you're using NVMe with Ubuntu at the moment, I'm sure things will change, but you need to use Belena Etcher. And there are similar apps available for Windows and Macs as well. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.